Okay, AP Calculus class. We're doing implicit differentiation. These are your three examples I told you I would do for you on a video, and you can apply those to solve those problems that I gave you uh, for homework. So here, we're going to take the derivative of both sides to find dy dx. Take the derivative of both sides, then we'll isolate dy dx, or remember, this is also denoted as y prime. So we have a product rule situation here, where we'll call this u and this v, and remember that this product rule, we take the derivative is going to be u times v prime plus v times u prime. We take the derivative of y, we get y prime. We take the derivative of 4x plus 3, we get 4. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say u is x cubed. So u prime is 3x squared. And v is sine y. So v prime is cosine y times, chain rule, says so we have to multiply by y prime. So u times v prime is x cubed times y prime times cosine y, that's u times v prime, plus v times u prime is sine y times 3x squared, or 3x squared times sine y, plus y prime equals 4. Now recall, we want to isolate the y prime, so I'm going to move everything that doesn't have a y prime to the right side and leave the y prime on this side. I have x cubed y prime cosine y plus y prime. I'm going to subtract the 3x squared sine y from both sides to get 4 minus 3x squared sine y. Now I factor out the common factor of y prime, which is the dy dx. You get y prime times x cubed cosine y plus 1 is equal to 4 minus 3x squared sine y. Now I divide both sides by x cubed cosine y plus 1 to get y prime equals 4 minus 3x squared sine y over x cubed cosine y plus 1. And that is dy dx. On the second problem I showed you I do as an example, we're going to find the second derivative, d squared y over dx squared. That's just the second derivative. We usually don't say d squared y over dx squared. We say the second derivative of y with respect to x. Or we just call this y double prime. So I'm going to take the derivative once, then I'm going to take the derivative again to get the derivative of this. So I'm going to have the derivative of this is going to be 2x. And I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. So this is going to be plus. 2 times y times y prime using a chain rule. Again, when I take the derivative of any variable with respect to x that's not x, I have to use the chain rule. And 25 derivative of a constant is 0. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate the y prime because it's going to make it easier on this. I get y prime equals, and this is going to be, I subtract the 2x from both sides. Oops. And then divide both sides by 2y. So we're going to do this in two steps. 2yy y prime equals negative 2x. Then I divide by 2y and I get negative 2x over 2y. That equals negative x over y. That's my y prime. So now what I'm going to do is take the second derivative of that and I'm going to get y double prime equals, now we do the quotient rule. We have, we're going to put the negative out front first and then take the derivative of the constant, or the, sorry, the quotient. So the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the denominator squared. This is negative y minus xy prime over y squared. That's y double prime. If I want that in terms of x and y, which I think we probably will, we're going to go ahead and plug in the y prime here. So I'm going to end up with, let's pull this down here, negative. This is going to be y minus x times negative x over y. And this is all over y squared. Now, if all they asked me to do was find the second derivative on f or q, you could have stopped at this line. Either either place, here or here. But because I'm multiple choice, a lot of times they're going to clean this up and we'll show you how to do that. So I've got the negative on the outside still. 
Now here I've got y minus uh, negative times negative makes positive. X times X, this is like X over 1, so this becomes X squared over Y. And this is again all over Y squared. Now I'm going to keep the negative out front. And I'm going to get a common denominator here. When I'm getting into Y in the denominator, I have to multiply this one by Y over Y. This one gives me Y squared over Y plus X squared over Y all over Y squared. This is negative x squared plus y squared over y divided by y squared. Remember, division by y squared is the same as multiplication by 1 over y squared. So this is really the same as negative 1 over y squared times x squared plus y squared over y. And this is just showing you so you can get this in the multiple choice. You would stop here on the FRQ. The multiple choice might present it to you in a simplified form, cleaned up form. This is going to be negative 1 times x squared plus y squared is x squared plus y squared, and y squared times y is y cubed. And that's the second derivative. This could show up on the multiple choice as this. But on FRQ, you would stop here. And finally, the last example I told you I was going to do for you. This one was find the equation of the tangent line of the curve x squared plus y squared equals 25 and point three negative 4. Well, we just found the derivative y prime as negative x over y, if you remember that from before. And so that's the slope of the tangent line. So when we plug in the point 3, negative 4, we get y prime evaluated at 3, negative 4 is equal to the negative, and then the x is 3, over the y value negative 4, so that's going to be 3 fourths. We have a point on the curve, remember the point of tangency is also on the tangent line, so we can look at the y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1, the point slope formula of the equation of the line. We plug in the x and the y for x1, y1, and we get y minus negative 4 is y plus 4 equals the slope is the derivative at the point. So it's going to be the y prime at 3, negative 4, and we're going to plug in that. So we get 3, negative, sorry, it's just 3 fourths. That's what we found x minus, and now the x value is 3. And this is the equation of the line tangent to the curve at the point 3, negative 4. And that's how you do those examples. So, if you have any questions, email me. Otherwise, have fun doing all that fun calculus for me.